The example we'll be looking at shows a brokerage with international presence trading in several asset classes and we'll be able to see exposures and value at risk across all levels of the business. The scenario assumes that value at risk numbers are pre-calculated externally from Panopticon and at each level since the non-additive nature of VAR prevents aggregation of lower level VAR values outside of the VAR calculation engine. Panopticon offers a wide range of connectors to different types of data sources and also supports combination of data from separate sources on the fly. Among our customers, streaming real-time sources such as various message brokers and complex event processing engines are among the most widely used data sources, alongside high-performance time series databases or tick databases of different brands, for which Panopticon has out-of-the-box no-code connectivity. This is an example serving to show the few settings required to configure a subscription from a streaming data source. There's very few settings to make, before you can bring in streaming data into the Panopticon interface. Panopticon also offers stream processing capabilities, much along the same principles as well-known complex event processing engines. A stream processing application is created by building up a graph of nodes, starting in one or several input nodes and ending with one or several output nodes. The nodes in the stream will do things like aggregating, branching, calculating, conflating, filtering, joining, or applying transforms powered by, for example, Python. Now, as we start looking at the example, we see how in this traditional tabular view, we can easily roll up the numbers from desk levels to office, country, region, and all the way up to global level. We can also filter on asset classes, for example, focusing on just equities and combine that filter with a particular region, for example, Europe. On the next dashboard, we can see how a richer visual display of the same data can make a difference in how big exposures and limit breaches clearly stand out. Understanding of the data is also enhanced by the ability to select items in one display and get visual feedback on the same item in a different display. We can accentuate the color coding interactively by adjusting the tolerance on this color legend, making small deviations stand out stronger. Or we can set a zero limit on the left hand side of this numeric filter, making us see only exposures that have surpassed the limit. The summary dashboard provides a higher level view of the business where we are looking at it country by country and not detailed all the way down to single offices and desks. The distribution of our exposure across regions and countries is quite clear. We get a good understanding of country level exposure distribution as well as value at risk on one day and ten day. The exposure heat map lets us know in what regions we're not holding particular asset classes and more importantly how we are in our exposure relative to limit. At the point where we'd like to see more details on something, for example, asset class equities in Europe, we simply right click and select show desk positions, which takes us to a more detailed display showing data for what we selected. Here we are weaving in portfolio information such as position value and price changes on the day, where details on the development in real time is displayed on demand. If I spot something that seems to merit further investigation with near-term history, that as well as a click away as I select intraday history. In the intraday historic view, the data is barred or conflated at the level of my choice here, starting with 300 seconds or five minute bars. And as I focus in on a time span of interest, I can retrieve more granular, higher resolution data, in this case, all the way down to one second bars. You can also build displays that utilize automatic barring, meaning that you will always see a fixed number of data points or bars with a variable bar size that changes as you zoom in or out on the time span using the time filter.
Another popular feature, instead of being able to look at market movements in retrospect by playing back the market data after market hours or end of day. Here we're loading historic data conflated into one minute bars that we can either step through manually, minute by minute, or we can fast forward through it automatically. There's many use cases for Panopticon with complex data involving big volumes, multiple variables, deeply hierarchical data, multi-categorical data, and rapidly changing data. In common use cases include instrument screening, pre-trade analysis, market monitoring, trade position and limit monitoring, profit and loss monitoring, TCA execution optimization, market risk as seen here, and credit and counterparty risk. Panopticon works out of the box with most complex event processing engines and tick databases on the market.